Good morning. This is Lulu Garden Kitty number one and Stephanie with Growing from the Woodpile. And today is a day of how I keep my cats and my dog out of the garden. There's Luca, Garden Kitty number two, Goose, the only garden doggy. Lulu over here is swatting at me because she, she not done with lovin's. Yes, oh, you want more lovin's. She's sitting on my garden chair. Yeah, I oh, nibble, nibble. Uh, this is where I like to come out and sit, look at the garden, play with the animals. Yeah, yeah, you're just wanting at me. Okay, all right, get some lovin's. So we'll do a garden tour of how we keep them from destroying the garden. Goosey Goose. Hi, Goose. Hi. So, with Goose, to keep him out of the garden, Lulu's teasing him. We set up the fence. Now, he's a corgi, and um, so he doesn't jump very high. So, with dogs, not all dogs is this going to work with. He has busted through in some areas because this is just a cheap fence. I'll put him some video in of uh, before we reinforced it, what he would do. He was, he's a smart little doggy. He's still a puppy. He's just barely a year old. But that's been enough to keep him out. Um, I do let him come in with me occasionally. And he hasn't, he's gotten in the beds. He hasn't dug them. But what he has done with, um, when he was unattended, is he likes to chew up the irrigation drip line, which I haven't quite fixed Right here, this is the third time before we had fixed the fence that he did chew this up. And um, it's not hard to fix, it's just annoying to keep fixing. Um, he does like to chew on this Rosa hibiscus that's on the outside, but mostly it's the drip irrigation that he is after. Now, with the cats, um, I've had the garden three years and had the cats seven or eight. Um, it's just a matter of putting stuff in the beds that don't allow them to stand in poop easily. So this, this has no function for, um, plants, but it doesn't allow them in. So I do like this teepee effect. This is metal concrete mesh and, um, some pokies on the side. And then once plants are established, they don't they don't get into them. They don't like to be touched while they while they poo. So when I first made the garden beds, um, I actually had bought too much cattle paddle. I have one, two, three, four, five arches, and they're double cattle paneled. Um, I'll show you what I mean here, but before I go over there, and then there's cattle panel all along the back wall so things can grow up on it. Um, they haven't grown up on it as much as I thought they would, but I'm still relatively a new gardener. So what I mean by double paneled is there's one and then, then there's a second one. So these are eight foot beds and these are about four feet. So they're double arched. So anyways, I had extra cattle panel and what I did is I came in and I laid down the extra cattle panel here at an angle 
So the cats can't stand and poo, and they can't get underneath it and poo. So you see how it, it sits on the bed here. The bed's about, this is an eight inch board, and then there's like two or three inches of mulch. And it goes and it attaches up to the arch. And that's just tied with um, right here. It's just tied with, I don't know if you can see it, green like twisty tie for plants. And that's what it's tied with. So it works really good at keeping them out sometimes. Um, it's really annoying to mulch and put down extra compost. Depending on what's growing in there, um, I will just get in with my hands and kind of move it and then put things. Um, hi, I'm trying to film a video here. Yeah, yeah, I am. Do you mind? Yeah, yeah. Okay, she does mind. But um, I'll move it over and then put it in. Or sometimes I just mulch or I just compost on top of the mulch and then add more mulch. Probably an okay plan. Um, you can see another one in this bed. Or if there's things in it that I can just pull the whole metal out and really get into the bed, then I'll do that. But if there's established like peppers and stuff that's going to destroy them, then I won't. It's really wanting attention right now. Yeah, yeah. So like this bed, I would have to decide if I want to destroy that tomato plant over there. Yes, it is like December and I still have tomato plants. Uh, the skin gets tougher, so I usually will just roast them and make salsa out of them by taking their skins off or I will, um, I'm sorry, get inside charge, or I'll make salsa out of them. So that's how I've done that. So didn't, uh, for another video, one day I would like to move the arch. These are four foot beds and so there's one foot on one side of the arch and then three foot on the other side. Kind of hard to reach on the three foot side even though I do have long arms. When I reset some beds a couple of years ago, like these ones, I put them directly in the middle of the beds. It's kind of a jungle in there of broccoli. So this is a pepper bed right here. And sorry, there's my little greenhouse for my figs. Lulu just wants to follow me around today. So over here, they don't really go in this bed. And this one's heavily mulched. And so here's the cattle panel and right here. And, um, and I was being, <sighs> yes, did you, oh, you knocked my camera. Did you know this video was about you? Um, once they've established that they can't really dig and stuff, they don't really get into the bed. They just kind of leave it be. But this is my pepper bed and he's, look at this huge one. Yes, I get sidetracked by plants, even though we're talking about them them yes so once i've established that it's there they don't really get in and dig and that is really how i keep them out they've not got into these circle tubs i've never had to put anything in them i don't know if it's because it's higher i am but they just have it so that's nice um you can see that there's cattle panel down here on the other side of the pepper bed so really it's just about making it uncomfortable for them to not be able to stand the way they want to stand when they poo. So the last bed um, that we started back over here, we're walking our way over there. Like this one only has two feet of metal. And um, so I'm thinking they think something's there. They have got in once here, and so I do have like these pigeon pokey things, and I put that there, and then it just deterred them from wanting to get in to that bed. And then back to the original bed. This one, that's why there's the pokey things, just so if they walk over it, they don't want to get in there. And then I really did want to take off this wire mesh in this one that you, you can see here, but it would disturb 
the shoshito pepper and what's in there. But again, once I established that there was something in there that they um, they haven't went to got in and dig in it. And yeah, see, just kind of following me around. <laughs> so I get to enjoy my, my cats in the garden and doggo when I want to let him in. But then they're not always in the garden disturbing things. Now, do they poo in this this mulch in the pathway? Yeah, they do. And this little weirdo, if I let him in, digs up their poo and eats it. So we talked to the vet. The vet said it's okay. So everything's good. But thank you for learning and growing with the wood pile on how we keep our kitties and our doggies from pooing in, and peeing in the garden. He's the only one that tolerates Goose. Lulu doesn't like him at all. She will let him sniff her. They kind of play together. Huh. This is my garden starts over there. I'm watering. I had some issues starting them. That was the end of the video. If you're still here, it's just bonus. All right. Thank you for joining us. Just a small short video on how I keep my dog and cats out of the garden. First of all, the cats can come in the garden. Goose is not allowed in the garden. He's a short dog, so the white picket fence, supported by iron, keeps him out. So I keep the cats out of the... Let's just start over. 